فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So the hukum technically means what? It is to affirm a matter. فهو إثبات أمر. It is to affirm a matter. For a matter. لأمر for a matter. أو نفي عنه or is to negate it from it. To say no, it's not for it. So whenever I affirm something for somebody, أخي, you are the one entitled for this. I gave you a hukum. Are you with me? And whenever I negate from somebody something, it has become a... Those who tend to think that the hukum is only the ruler, the Muslim ruler, and it's only him, are jahala. Then the hukum is anything you affirm for somebody. If you say to somebody, you are brave, that's a hukum. That is what? It's a hukum. You've what? You've affirmed a matter for a person. Are you with me? Also, if you negate something from somebody and say, Akhi, you are not smart. You've now done a hukum, had a hukum. They can fall in it, jawr in it. Which is you can fall in that statement of yours, al-hukum ghayr ma'anza Allah. Because it's a hukum, it falls under wa man lam yahkum. So it's a hukum. This narrow-minded way of looking at it and just thinking, oh, it's a, it's a person who sits in leadership and authority, this is wrong. Well, you know the ayah. Where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُوا بِالْأُنْتَ ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ أَيُمْسِكُ عَلَى هُونٍ أَمْ يَجُسُّهُ فِي التُرَابِ Allah said, أَلَا سَأَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ By them taking their children and burying their children alive and being upset with this judgment of Allah, the fact that they did this, Allah says, أَلَا سَأَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ So the Sharia actually took an extra step, which is what? Not just only is a hukum uh, something you affirm and something you negate, rather what you do is also a hukum. Sharia st- take a step further and said, the thing that you do is now considered a hukum. Are you with me? So, are you with me, brothers? Now, look at if we look, if we now analyze the word hukum like that and we look at it in that manner, we will come to realize what? That the ayah wa malam yahkum bima anzal Allah, the reason why the khawarij they fell into that the murtakib al kabira is a kafir. Because they took this ayah, anyone who rules by other than what Allah sends down, and they were sm- those khawarij were more smarter than the khawarij of today. And the takfiris of today, the khawarij and, were more smarter than them. No doubt. Those khawarij, what did they do? They were consistent on their principle. And so what they said was, you drank alcohol, that's a hukum. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَيْكَمُ الْكَافِرُونَ It's Allah says, anyone who judges by other than what Allah sent done, and you just done an action. So what did they do? They made takfir on this murtakib, the first people who fall into majors. Does that make sense now? Is that crystal clear? But these ones, due to their ignorance, and their lack of consistency upon the principles that they're picking up from has made them fall into a shortcoming. He uses But then he picks and chooses where he wants to apply it on. When the ayah shows generalization and not specification. Are you with me brothers? This is very important. And of course this goes back to the issue I was mentioning before. الحكم على شيء فرع عن تصوره To place a ruling on a matter, it comes first from what? Perception. It comes from perception. Now that we've understood what hukum means linguistically and technically, how many types of ahkam are there? There are three types of ahkam, according to the ulama, according to the scholars, the ahkam of three types. The first one is hukum shar'i. A hukum which is what? Hukum shar'i. And we've taken that one before, which is huwa khitab al-shar'i al-muta'alliq bi af'al al-mukallafeen مِن طَلَبٍ أَوْ تَخِيرٍ أَوْ وَضْعٍ صح؟ It's the one we studied, which the two types come out of it. حُكُم which is what? حُكُم الشَّرْعِيُّ التَّكْلِيفِيُّ Even though we discussed the word تَكْلِيفِي is, is, is a word that we should use. Is it right for you to use? لأن الشيخ الإسلام تهم ودري say that the word تَكْلِيف it never comes in the نصوص except negation. Negation, right? لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسَعَى Are you with me? 
Um, but they, those, who, those who say that you can use it, they said that the Nusus is negating that uh, the Taklif is connected to the essence of the, of the, the, the ruling. And they're saying, we, were, we never meant it on the, on the side of the ruling. Does that make sense? When we said Hukum, Ash-Shari, At-Taklifi, the Taklif is not based upon the what? The ruling, but it's connected to the person's action. Sahih? We're talking about your action. You as a person, you find burden in it. Are you with me? Um, but those scholars, they said to him, well, that still goes against the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Bilal, arihna bis-salah. Bilal, give us raha. So you shouldn't even find burden in it. Bilal, make us have raha, relaxation. In the what? In the prayer. So the word takrif, it's best to leave it and not use it. But since it's become musha'a and it's used, and of course, they don't intend it by what is being negated in the ayah. It's best to make it as what? Al-Ahkab al-Shari'ya al-Talabiya. Which is Talabi. The Sharia is requesting something from you. The second type is known as what? Al-Ahkab al-Shari'ya al-Wad'iya. Sahih? And they're both connected to what? Both of them. Both of them. The Wad'iya and the Al-Shari'ya. Uh, sorry, the Wad'iya and the Taklifiya are both connected to what? They are both connected to the action of the slave. They're both connected to what? Al Mutaliqa to be of Ali, Al Mukalafina. But the Ahkam Al Shari'a Al Wadriya, five come out of it. Al Ahkam Al Shari'a Al Takrifiya, Al Talabiya, five come out of it. Sahih, and we studied Al Wa Al Ijab, Al Nadb, Al Ibaha, Al Tahrim, and what? الإكراه. Those five are the أحكام الشرعية ال التكليفية. And the second one was الأحكام الشرعية الوضعية. That's the first type. That's the first type of حكم شرعي. Those are the two types. We've dealt with that in what book? أصول من علم أصول that we've done privately. We haven't recorded that. الورقات we did it in there and we also done it in our كتاب رسالة اللطيفة. Now the second type of hukum. So the hakam al sharia is the word hakam is plural. Hukum is what? Hukum aqli. The hukum which is what? The hukum which is aqli. And that is, for example, that a whole is more than a half. What did we say before when we defined the word hukum? It is to affirm a matter for a matter or to negate from it. Sah? Now you negate, you're affirming what? You're affirming what? You're affirming that a whole is more than a half, right? How have you affirmed it? In what way have you affirmed this? Through your aql. So this is called hukum aql. Are you with me? That is it. The, second, the third one is al hukm al adi the hukum that comes by way of norms. Norms. Such as, for example, again, what did we say hukum meant? It is to affirm for something or it's to negate from it. Sah? Now you're affirming for something or you're negating from something based upon your are based upon the norms, the ada. Sah? Which is, for instance, al khubzu mushbi' that a bread will fill you. That the bread will fill you. Wa naru harra, that the fire burns. What's the farq between the ada and the aqal? Huh? What's the difference between the two? The difference between the two is that aqal is affirmed from where it's universal. Meaning that you don't have to be in a buqa'a, a particular land. صح? It's more universal. But the ada can be universal. Some of it and some of it may not be universal. Meaning it's not all universal. It may differ from one place to another.
So what did we define? Let's go back to the definition of fiqh because we're defining fiqh word for word, right? The first one we said was what? Ma'rifah. The second one we said al ahkam al Are you with me? We did that. al ahkam al we spoke about it. We now to al fariyah So when we said al ahkam al what dropped from there? al ahkam al aqliyah And al ahkam al adiyah When you're affirming this ahkam al how are you affirming it? First of all, al fariyah Fariyah means what? Why are we saying fariyah for here? Specifically here, the reason is because, or you can say tafsiliya if you want to, or fara'iyya if you want to, you're trying to get rid of what? Ijmaliya. If you say ijmaliya, who's there? You want to get rid of usul fiqh. So fara'iyya means fiqh is more detailed, whereas fiqh is more comprehensive. Does that make sense? Al-amru taqtadi al-wujub, for example. Al-amru, a command shows obligation. That enters any chapter of fiqh. صح? It goes and enters. But then when you say وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer This is a fiqh issue you're talking about You've narrowed it down to what? You've narrowed it down It's more tafsili, it's more detailed Does that make sense? Very good بِالْإِسْتِدْلَالِ بِالْفِلْعِ أَوْ بِالْقُوَّةِ الْقَرِيبَةِ Why are you using it for? بِالْإِسْتِدْلَالِ بِالْفِعْلِ You're using it for an action are you with me? The reason why you're using the delil with it is for an action. Now here, brothers, I want to ask you a question. Brothers, what did we just say that hukum sh- what, what did we say that a fiqh is? It is to know what? It is, the word, no, no, technically, technically. It is ma'rifah to know? Akam al-shari'ah. Al-fari'ah. So you need to know the akam? The ahkam of the religion, knowing it. How, how many ways do you know it? You, you know it either by ilm or by madan. Sah? Are you with me, brother? No. Very good. Uh, what about if a per- So what's the person who knows fiqh called? Faqih, right? So when can a person be a faqih? He can be when he's what? When he has ma'rifah of the ahkam al sharia al fariya with his delil, with his evidence. Sah. What about if a person says to you, I don't know the hukum of this issue? Does he lose the title of becoming a faqih? Because he doesn't have ma'arif of the hukum here. And can somebody be a, a alim? Can somebody be, so then if that's the case, is he is it possible for somebody to know every hukum shara in the in the world? So there's no faqih in the world. So how do you reconcile the two? If you just said now it's ma'rifatu al-ahkam al-shara'iyya Huh? Al-fara'iyya right? So that's the difference between Bil-istidlal al-fi'li Or bil-quwwati al-qariba The way he can use the evidences is either on the spot Or he just requires just a little nudge the memory In other words, he has the tools with him He'll just give me a day or two I'll get this sorted. And I will spread it out for you and I'll break it down for you in pieces. Are you with me? But if one person says, you give me months, then let's be faqih. Like us, we take months to look into the issue and look at all the deleed and all the adilla and la aqwan and what, what. Because the, what's missing? The al is still missing, the instruments are still missing. Like in al faqih, this is un in him. So he can get it what? Bilquwati al qariba, the strength that is close. He's got that close strength with him. Are you with me, brothers? So in other words, in other words, brothers, what? Two ways he can affirm it. Either by istihrar. Are you with me, brothers? A faqih can come with he's a faqih if he can do it with two ways. Bil istihrar. Istihrar means what? On the spot he can give the ruling. And give you the where, the where he got the answer from, and the aqwal. Uh, sorry, not the aqwal necessarily, uh, but the the delil and the istilal and the manat and the and the illa and whatnot. He can go through it. But are you with me? Mm-hmm. Or he can second way is al bahf wa nazar. He can bring it fast from a little research. He can look at it quickly from a little research. That individual does not lose the title of being a what? A faqih. He's a faqih. 
Are you with me, brothers? Together? Very good. Now let's define qawa'id al-fiqiyah together. What does qawa'id al-fiqiyah mean uh, as a subject? Um, scholars have defined it in different, different definitions. Are you with me, brothers? There are ta'arif, which are this definition, so it's going to be large in amount. But even that though their wordings are different, it is what? Mutaqaribatul ma'na. The meanings are very close to each other. The meaning is what? Is very close, is very close to each other. So now let's go in, inshaAllah ta'ala. The first is, it is a hukum. What is it? It's a hukum. In other words, we don't have to now go into what hukum means. We've defined what the word is. It's a hukum. If somebody asks you, qawaid al fiqih what is it? It's a hukum. You're going to affirm something or you're going to negate something. Hukum, which is what? Here is where the khilaf occurs. Are you with me, brothers? And it's a homework, inshallah ta'ala, that I want you to do. Some scholars, they define qawaid al fiqih they say, hukum kulli. And others, they said what? It is, it is what? Hukum aglabi. Hukum kulli and hukum aglabi. What is the difference between the two? The first ones, they said it is hukum kulli, meaning qawaid al fiqiyya, it is a comprehensive principle where everything comes under it. For example, the qa'ida, which is al-umuru bi maqasidiha. It goes in all of the chapters. So it's kulli. Are you with me, brothers? Are you with me, brothers? Some said, no, 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 no. The qawa'id al-fiqiyah, it has masail which are mustathnayat. There are masail which are what? Acceptance. Exceptions. Are you with me? <coughs> Whether they enter it. Such as what? Brothers. Such as does wudu does it require intention? Al umur bi maqasidi how you said. So what about if a person does ghusul for own he does ghusul, he has jihad janaba, major impurity. And he done what? Ghusul. Ghusul is what? It's to have a bath. It's to clean himself. Raf'u. Raf'u al-hadath al-akbar. It's to remove the major impurity from himself. Sahih? Pay attention. His intention was only for dhuhr, but not for asr. He done ghusul only for dhuhr. He intended, I'm going to do ghusul only for dhuhr. I'm going to do another one for asr. Are you with me? Can we use this qa'id al-umur bi maqasidiyah? Does wudu require intentions? Al-umur bi maqasidiyah. Does ghusul require tahara? Does it... Are you with me? Does tayammum require? The odd, this is, this is what, when you're researching this issue and I'm sending you a homework on this issue, you need to look into this. Which is hukum kulli. Also, they say, the ones who, these are the ones who are arguing and saying, look, we found qawaid which you guys, qawaid which have been put in place. Ma'adalika, we have mustathnayat. There are things that he hasn't dealt with and he came out of it. That you and I all agree on. And the other side, what did they say? No. When we said amongst ourselves, al umuru bi maqasidiha, what, what, would you, what was the first letter we put in there? The word. We said al umur. Al umur here means what? Istighraq. All of matters are what is intended by it. Sahih? I remember when we took the hadith of inna mal a'malu? Inna mal al a'mal, al a'mal. The Prophet used what? Al-A'mal. Istighraq. We discussed that in the what? In the sharh of the hadith. In our Arba'in al nawawiya we've done it. And also in our Al-Umdatul Ahkam. So they said, look, it's istighraqiya. Because Al-Umur bi maqasidiha is a qa'idah which was taken from what? The hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Are you with me, brothers? So, where does the line? Just so you brothers know, Kitab Muwafaqat by Imam al he, he speaks about it. 
and Imam Shatibi in his Kitab al-Muwafaqat, he deals with this issue and he reconciles between the two. Now, brothers, pay attention. Pay attention. We were defining what we were, what we were defining. We were defining qawaid al fiqhiyah The ta'lif, the definition here we're giving is what? qawaid al fiqhiyah What did we say at the beginning? Hukum. And we said hukum man. Khilaf amongst the, the ulama of qawaid al fiqhiyah What did they say? Some said what? Kulli. Some said what? The ones who said it is hukum aglabi, they did it for us another reason. Not just the first reason that I mentioned. They also had another reason behind why they said it. They said, Hukum Aglabi is, is our way to distinguish between Qawaid al Usuliya and Qawaid al Fiqiyah. This is how we distinguish between the two. Sahih? They said Qawaid al Fiqiyah is Aglabi, majority. Whereas Qawaid al Usuliya is Kulliya, they said. Are you with me? So they said that's our difference, and this is min al furuq the differences between al qawaid al fiqhiyya and al qawaid al usuliyya. For al qawaid al usuliyya is what? Qawaid kulliya. Whereas qawaid al fiqhiyya is what? Fahi aglabiya. That's the difference. Are you with me, brothers? But I want you guys to research more. But for me, are you with me, brothers? My humble, humble, humble research that Qawaid al Fiqiyah is Hukum Kulli. It's not Hukum Aglabi. Huh? It is a. Eh? But you guys research and look into it more. And I'm not going to tell you why. Because that defeats the purpose. You, you guys have to come with the research. So if I have taken the opinion that of those who said it is Hukum Kulli, are you with me? Hukum? Kulli, have I got an answer for what is the difference between Qawaid al fiqhiyah and Qawaid al usuliyah Have I got an answer for that? If, the, if, you're, if, if I believe that Qawaid al fiqhiyah is Kulli and Qawaid al usuliyah is Kulliya, because we didn't differ upon that, we differed only upon Qawaid al fiqhiyah if it's Kulli or Aglabi. For me, has there come a difference between Qawaid al fiqhiyah and Qawaid al usuliyah Let me repeat my question again. Both parties, we're not differing upon Qawaid al Usuliya. Qawaid al Usuliya, for example, is Al Amr Tahtadi al Wujub. That's Qawaid al Usuli. That every command shows obligation. That's Qawaid al Usuliya. Usul al Fiqh. Qawaid al Usuliya and Usul al Fiqh is the same. Okay? Qawaid al Usuliya. We all agree, both parties, that Qawaid al Usuliya is Kuli. There's no khilaf on that one. We, don't, we can move on from that. Our khilaf is what? Is qawaid al fiqhiyya kulli or is it aglabi? No. I have chosen, Abdul Rahman, that it's qawaid al fiqhiyya is what? Kulliya. Has there come a difference for me between qawaidat al usuli, I'm a qawaid al usuliya, and qawaid al fiqhiyya? Do I have a difference? Based on for me, there's no difference yet. So I have to, tell, I have to just now mention what is that? What is the difference between Qawaid al usuli and Qawaid al fiqhiyah Does that make sense, brothers? Are we all together? Very, it's very important that we don't, you don't slip here. So for me, definition is hukmun kulliyun yantabiqu ala juz'iyatiha. It is a hukum kulli. And I'll mention where, where, where my different lies, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to come to it, inshallah, soon. So it's a hukum kulli. And my argument is what Imam Shatibi said, Rahimahullah. The reason why, Hukum Kulli. I won't mention it now, but it's what Imam Shatibi said. You guys research into it, inshallah. And Kitab al Muwafaqat. So it's a Hukum Kulli. Yantabiqu ala juz'iyatiha that applies on its sub branches. It's Kulli and it, it applies on its what? It, on its what? On its sub branches. And the juz'iyat that come out of it. What is it? Min abwab mukhtalifah. Min abwab mukhtalifah. Which are different topics. And the reason why I'm saying min abwab mukhtalifah, I want to get rid of what? 
I'm trying to do ihtiraz of Dabit. Dabit is one particular chapter. Whereas Qawaid al fiqiyya is what? Many chapters. So I need to get rid of Dabit and Qawaid al fiqiyya So we said the Qawaid al fiqiyya is what? Hukumun kulli of those who say it's kulli and those who say aghlabi. Yantabiqu ala juz'iyatiha which applies on its sub-branches. And then I said min abwaab mukhtalifa which is what? Different. It enters different chapters. Qawaid al fiqiyya enters different chapters. And the reason why I'm saying here min abwabin mukhtalifa or the definition here says min abwabin mukhtalifa is because the dabid dabid is the thing that enters only one chapter. Sah? Dabid is something that enters what? One chapter. It sticks to only one chapter. That is a dabid. For example, when you say kullama sahha bay'uhu sahha rahnuhu Anything which you can sell, anything you can sell that you can't do bayr with, you're also allowed to do rahan with it. Rahan is what? In other words, if I can sell this phone right now, I can sell this phone, I can also give this phone to a shop owner and say to him, if, can I have uh, bread and can I have sugar? And can I have oil? Keep my phone. I'll bring you the money for that. If I don't, you can take it. This is called rahan. In other words, he's going to keep my phone until I bring what? Since the qaida is what? Anything I can sell. Can somebody sell a phone? You can do it with rahan. Can I sell alcohol? Can I do rahan with alcohol? So this qa'ida, is it qa'ida or is it a dhabit? It's a dhabit. Why? It only enters what? Mu'amalat. I'm a bait specifically. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? So this is not, this is called a dhabit fiqhi. Naam. Whereas a qa'ida is what? It enters, it enters chapters after, after chapters. Another example of a, the difference between dhabit and a qaida would be is kullu ghuslin every ghusl sababuhu qablahu fa huwa wajib wa kullu ghuslin sababuhu ba'dahu fa huwa mustahab every ghusl which its reason comes before it it is wajib Are you with me, brothers? Any ghusl, which is reason, comes before it, it's wajib. This ghusl is wajib. For example, janaba. The janaba, does it come before the ghusl? Huh? Oh, it's wajib. This, you have, this ghusl is wajib. Are you with me, brothers? Nifas. The postnatal bleeding for the women, 40 days of postnatal bleeding. Huh? Does it go before the ghusl? The ghusl is wajib. Are you with me, brothers? Hayb, menstruation. Does it go before the ghusl? The, the, the ghusl is wajib here. The jima' intimacy. Does it go before the? It's wajib. Dukhulul Islam, entering into Islam. Somebody just came into Islam. The entering of the Islam, which is the reason, did it go before the ghusl? It's wajib. All those are wajib. Then the, the next one is, if the reason is after it, then the ghusl is what? The ghusl is musta, mustahab. Can somebody think of something? Jum'ah. And this is where the khilaf occurs. Salatul Jum'ah. Does it come after the ghusl? No. The ghusl comes first, then the reason is after it. Another one example? Can something go? Dukhulu Mecca, entering Mecca. You enter Mecca after you do the ghusl. The reason is after the ghusl. The Arafah, the ghusl for Arafah. Is what? After. So all of those are Eidain, Salatul Eid. Are you with me? Salatul Eid, the ghusl comes first, then the Eid you go to. 
It's mustahab. That's the qaida. Lakin, is it accepted? Is it not? We'll have the niqash later about it. Are you with me, brothers? Ala kulha, this is called what a dhabit. This qaida, where does it enter? Ghusl only. Kitab al-Tahara. Chapter ghusl. Are you with me, brothers? You can't use that for any other? This is called a dhabit. It's a dhabit. It's what? It's a babid. It is not a qaida. So that's why our definition. Other scholars define it differently. And we will mention why their definition here is incorrect. So he said, Hukmun kulliyun intabiku ala juz'iyatiha li ta'rifa ahkamaha minha. So you can learn its rulings from it. So this is qawaid al fiqiyah. Instead of where, where I said, min abwab al mukhtalifah, different chapters. They said so you can learn its rulings from it. Are you with me, brothers? And I said this ta'rif is incorrect and it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Because this is mentioned in the tamar and the fa'idah of qawaid al fiqiyah. And when you're defining it, two things you can't do. And this was one of them, which is trying to bring the benefit of that field and defining it. Are you with me, brothers? But that's my difference between qawaid al usuli and qawaid al fiqiyah. Even though this is not part of the definition, but this is where I the difference of qawaid al usuli and qawaid al fiqiyah occur for me. Are you with me? And I'm going to mention it now. Qawaid al fiqiyah from the qaida directly you can take the ruling from it. Are you there? You see, you saw a person who is sitting down and the people are praying and he's sitting down. Are you with me, brothers? He's sitting down. And you see, you see him sitting on a chair and everybody else is standing up. The salah is dhuhr. You have to stand for the salah to dhuhr. Yeah? You have to stand for it. So I see a person with a chair. He's sitting down. After the salah, I, you, you, I, uh, uh, he asks me, he says, look, I couldn't have prayed standing up. What's the ruling? If I say to him, al-amru taqtadi al wujub and I go quiet. Can you take a ruling from that? That the obligation, the command shows obligation. I gave him qa'id al Yeah? Can you just say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Jazakallah khairan. Well, how do you take the ruling out there? What about if I was to say to him, al mashaqqatu tajlibu taysir? I gave him al qa'id al fiqhiya. He can take the ruling out of the qa'id al fiqhiya, you see? al mashaqqa al mashaqqa which is the hardship brings ease. This is qaida, qaida fiqiya. So directly he can say, oh, okay, just like Allah. But if I gave him a qaida usuliya, not fiqiya, qaida usuliya, and I said a command shows obligation, he wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. I have to give an example for it. So he can't take the ruling out of the qaida. I would have to say to him, I'm talking about the hadith of the Prophet, Salli qa'iman, fa ilam tastati, fa salli qa'idan, fa salli, pray, qa'idan, while sit down. It's an amr, wal amr al-qtari al-wujub. So it's wajib for you to pray, sit down, since you can't do the first one. Does that make sense? Whereas the qawaid al-fiqiyah, the hukum is taken from it directly. And of course there is a discussion amongst the ulama, can you use a qa'id al-fiqiyah as a delil? Or you have to use the... Where it's rooted from. Can you take Al Mashaqqa to Tajibu Taysir and say, My evidence is Al Mashaqqa to Tajibu Taysir? And this is my evidence. <coughs> or do you have to take it from the where it was taken from, which is the Quran and Sunnah, just give the ayah for it and the hadith for it? Which one is the which? There's a khilaf amongst the fuqaha, sorry, the, usu, the ulama of Qawa'id al Fiqih, you can see it in their madan, in its sources, if you want to go learn about it. So let me break it down for you guys, brothers. The way it works is this. The way it works is this. The difference between qawaid al usuliya and qawaid al fiqhiyya. This is the difference. The delil comes first. So just if you write it like arrow like this, you write delil and then you write arrow. And then you write delil and then arrow, which is the delil comes first. Then the qawaid al usuliya is taken from the evidence. So for example, salli qa'iman, pray standing up. فَإِلَّمْ تَسْتَطِعْ If you are not able here. فَصَلِّ قَاعِدًا Sit down and pray. The delil comes first. 
Then from that delil, what do I say? Al amru, taqtadi al wujub. The command shows obligation. So the delil comes first. Then the qaida is taken from qaida al usuli is taken from it. Are you with me, brothers? Then straight after that, the hukum fiqh is brought out of it. So you have to pray standing up, and if you do not, you are an athlete. So the second thing is, the third thing is what? The hukum fiqhi comes out of it, the hukum, the ruling. Are you with me, brothers? <laughs> the fourth one is, then the qa'idatul usuliyah comes out of it. Sorry, the qa'idatul fiqhiyah comes out of it. The qa'idah fiqhiyah, sorry. The qa'idah fiqhiyah. So it's dalil, qa'idah usuliyah, hukum fiqhi, and then the qa'idah fiqhiyah comes out of it. Then I say, al mashaqqatu tajribu al-taysir. Are you with me based on this hadith? So I can then just give him a ready-baked qa'idah. And the qa'idah was taken from the dalil, and the qa'idah usulia came in place, and then the hukum fiqhi was there. By the time I give him the qa'idah fiqhiyah, everything is in there. Are you with me? Are you with me, brothers? So for him to take the ruling out of the qa'idah fiqhiyah is easy for him. المشقة تجلب التيسير جميل كريستو كلير it makes sense are you with me so that is why brothers and that's the difference not the issue of حكم كلي and أغلبي that's not the difference are you with me that the, the real difference between قواعد الأصولية and قواعد الفقية that is how to know the difference between the two and there are other differences but this is the most well known uh, differences now inshallah ta'ala we're going to move on to the second point now all that time, we've only spoke about the definition of Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. We've finished that one. We spoke about it, now we know what Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. We have an understanding. Alisa Kadalik, isn't that the case? Yeah? Now we're going to move on to the second point, which is Maratib Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. The levels of Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. The levels. The level of Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. In other words, the types and the stages, the types of qawaid al-fiqiyah there are. Are you with me, brothers? So we're going to categorize qawaid al-fiqiyah, inshaAllah ta'ala. 